Speak. Jeffersonville, Indiana, USC. The Lord bless you. Let's just remain standing a moment as we bow our heads. Is there a special request? If you would, let it be known. Be known as you lift your hands to God and say, By that, Lord, you know my need. Heavenly Father, we are indeed a privileged people this morning to be assembled in the house of God when we know that there is so many that would want to be in the house of God this morning and is in hospitals and on beds of sickness and thou hast given us this privilege to be out here today. And we never come, Lord, to be seen of each other, though we love our fellowship one with another, but we could do that at our homes. But we have come here to fellowship with he who has brought us together as beloved children and brethren. We thank thee now, and the only way that we know to correctly fellowship with thee is around thy word. Thy word is a truth. We gather here for spiritual strength. We need it, Lord. We must have strength to endure the crosses that we bear. And we pray that you will send the great Holy Spirit today and will strengthen us all. Grant the request of your people as they have assembled and raised their hands to you that they have need of such things. Answer each one, Lord. We thank thee for aspiring the life of our sister Angren. Sparing the life of our sister Angren last night in the accident on the road up there. Here, thou was gracious to them, Lord, and we thank thee for that. And now we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to be with us and help us as we journey on, each and every one of us. Give us thy undergirding power and the faith of knowing that thy never failing presence will be with us in that hour when we cannot help ourselves we know the angels of god are encamped about those who fear him and they will bear us up lest at any time we dash our foot against a stone and we pray now that you will give us of the blessings for the word and speak through us and in us in jesus Christ's name amen I am grateful that the sun shine on, on the outside, the solar sun is shining. It was very bad this morning and I think in this country especially, we have so much gloomy, worried weather and to see the sun shining, coming out is very good. The little family uh, reunion today, I met my brothers and they're up at my sister's house and some of our relation around the city and around about. There's a big bunch of the Branhams. If they'd all come together from Kentucky in here, I guess we'd have to rent the city. There's so many of them. But just a little homecoming. We used to all meet at Mama's house, and she was an old type post that held us together. Kind of. But God taken the type post to heaven, and I hope that we'll all meet there someday. And now I spoke the other day. I said, you know, I believe that I will cut my Sunday's messages down for about 20 minutes and or 30 minutes and then pray for the sick and i thought of that this morning and i thought last night when sister downing called me and said that called billy and said that she had and sister angren on their road up had slid across the road and had had a wreck and while billy was sitting at the window along i don't know what time it is Maybe this morning sometime, I had been asleep for quite a little bit. I looked down at Brother Woods. The lights was out and I just knelt to pray. And when I did, something just said to me, it's all right. So then I told Billy, tell her everything I thought would be all right. I'm so glad to see them in this morning and sitting in the house of the Lord back here after on the road. A people that love you so that much to come for hundreds of miles to hear the gospel then I thought a 20 minutes message and as slow as I am they would be no good so I thought I will just that long and so then here brother Angren her son this morning singing how great thou art he has he means more to him this morning than he did yesterday afternoon because a great God of heaven spared his precious darling mother and sister. Now today, we are expecting a great time in the Lord. And I had two or three different texts here that I was looking at, and I didn't, couldn't figure just which one I will talk on this morning. 
one of them was cast your cares on him for he cares for you now if he cares why not you so then another one billy paul or not billy paul my other son joseph brought me uh this text a long time ago he was sitting in the, the room one day and he said looking up towards the picture and billy or joseph is a very fond of boats like little boys boats and uh, horses you know and he said to me daddy has jesus got a boat and i said i don't know so then after he got up and went out i happened to think has he got a boat and i took a text from that and just marked it down here on my book has jesus got a boat and i happened to think when he was here on earth he had to borrow a womb to be born in a grave to be buried in a boat to preach from but he's a pilot of the old ship of zion sure he has but and those texts that i was thinking maybe i could get them later before we leave to go back you know i like to speak from the tabernacle here because it's our own church we feel at liberty to say whatever the holy spirit says at other places even though the man wants to make you welcome you feel kind of a little cramped because that you are in somebody else's church and you want to be gentleman enough to respect their thoughts and their doctrine had a wonderful time this week down at the Birchman's place there and i went into a factory where they made a, uh, the cheese i see he and his wife and his son and them are present this morning and always thought that a cheese factory would be something like other places i've been in oh kind of sloppy and dirty my i can say one thing you can sure rest assured that place is not dirty that was the cleanest place i ever went into and especially in a factory and i didn't realize i thought oh maybe they'll make a hundred pound of cheese a day and they make six tons each day and of three of the factories going i thought oh my who eats all that cheese but the lord has blessed this man i had the privilege of being in his home a very lovely home a fine consecrated wife and there's no reason why they shouldn't live for christ each day and they are doing met his sons and they are very fine children we are so grateful for this fellowship that we have one with another found out their former pastor was a man that i know brother girly a very fine man of the united pentecostal faith that i met years ago johnsboro arkansas and didn't know that they were that was his pastor though now remember the services uh, this evening and then the lord willing next sunday again we hope to speak and then i think the following sunday then i have to go to chicago there i'll then i'll be gone for a while i have to take the family back home back or back to arizona so that they the children can enroll in school again and then we quit pastoring the pastor taking his services so we are very grateful to brother neville for his hospitality you know of inviting me and he is so no i like a brother a man like that where there's no guile there's no selfishness it's just genuine christianity i like that now we're going to read some of the scripture and then pass the comments and i don't know just what time that will get out on these long messages but i think i was talking the other day about speaking so long and someone said well now if you if you just spoke a few minutes and you speak kind of in mysteries anyhow said we'd never be able to understand it said just keep on talking and after a while it comes out he said so maybe the lord wants us to do it that way let's just bow again lord the word lays open on the pulpit and realizing that someday it will be closed for the, its last time and then the word will be flesh and then we are grateful for this time this morning and open to us by the holy thy holy spirit the contents of this word that we shall read may the holy spirit teach us today the things that we ought to know and may we then in return listen closely to every word weigh it deeply and then may those who are listening by the way of tip may they listen close and may we be able to catch what the holy spirit is trying to reveal to us for realize if he should anoint us then the whole anointing is not in vain it's for purpose that it might work to the good to the lord and may our hearts and understanding be open lord 
May we have freedom to speak and freedom to hear and access to faith, to believe that what we have heard, as it comes from God's word, that it might count up to us eternal life. In that great day that is to come, bless us today, condemn us when we are wrong. Let us know the faults that we have and bless us in the way that is right, that we might know which way to go and how to act in this present world that we might bring honor in our living here to Jesus Christ who died to give us a life in the great hereafter. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I want to read just out of a f two places out of the scriptures this morning. And one of them is just found over in the book of Exodus, frankly. Both of them are out of the book of Exodus. One, the 13th chapter, the 21st chapter, the 22nd verse. And the next one is the 14th chapter, the 10th, 11th, and 12th verses. Now I'll read from Exodus 13, 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. He took not away the pillar of a cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from the people. Now in Exodus 14 and the 10th verse, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And then said Moses, because there, beg your pardon, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. I'm going to read a couple of more verses. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not. Now listen close here. Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. The Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me, Speak to the children of Israel, that they go forward. But lift thou up thy rod, and stretch it out thine hand over the sea, and divide it, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I beheld, behold, I will harden the heart of the Egyptians, that they shall follow them, and I will get me on upon Pharaoh and upon all of his hosts and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me on upon Pharaoh and upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went before their face and stood behind them. And it became between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. It was a cloud of darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these, so that the one come not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on the right hand and on the left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them in the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked down unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their chariot wheels, that they drove them heavily, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fights for them and against Egyptians. The word of the Lord is so great, so good, there's just no way to stop reading it. It just becomes life as you read it. I think in this text this morning, though it's being tipped, I want to say this in the beginning. It finds, I find myself, and the reason that I, yesterday, while in studying, and I come upon this subject, and then I thought, I'm just going, if the Lord willing, to speak upon that because it drives me down. 
and I hope it drives us all down that we might see and cause us to look up and to study a little bit in comparing the day that was then, thee, unto the day that is now. I want to take three words for text, and that is why cry speak. God said unto Moses here in the 15th verse, Why criest thou unto me speak to the people, that they go forward, and why cry speak? Now we got quite a subject, and I'll try to hurry through as quick as possible. As the Holy Spirit leads, and I want to think of the of this text of Moses crying out to God in the time of trouble, and God rebuking Moses back right when the trouble was in session. And it's just in nature seeming like for a person to cry out, and then what I rebuke it is for God to turn around and rebuke him for saying it, for crying out to him. It looks like it's a very hard thing. Many times when we look at the scriptures in our own way of looking, it seems very hard. But if we study it a little while, we find out that the all-wise God knows just what he's doing. And he knows how to do these things and how to deal with man. He knows what's in man. He knows him. We don't. We only know from the intellectual side. He knows what's really in the man. Moses was born in this world and a gifted boy. He was born to be a prophet, a deliverer. He was born with the equipment born in him as every man that comes into the world is born with his uh, equipment. And I firmly believe in the foreknowledge of God, the predestination. Not that God is willing that any would perish, but all might come to repentance. But being God, he had to know and does know the end from the beginning see if he doesn't then he isn't infinite and if he is not infinite he isn't god so he wasn't willing certainly that any should perish but he knowing who would perish and who would not perish that's the reason and the very purpose that jesus came to the earth was to save those that god through his foreknowledge seen that wanted to be saved see because the whole world was condemned and i don't see how we could teach it any other way than the foreknowledge of God. And the Bible plainly says that he knows the end from the beginning and can tell it. Therefore, when a person tries to be something that they are not, they are only making an impersonation. And sooner or later, it will find you out. Your sins find you out. You cannot cover them. There is only one covering for sin, that's the blood of Jesus Christ. And it cannot be applied unless God has called you from the foundation of the world. That's what the blood was shed for, not to be trumped upon and made fun of and jobbed at and evilly spoke of and so forth. It was for a direct purpose, that's right, not to be played with, not to be impersonated by saying that the sins are covered when they are not. And no man can have his sins covered lest his name was put on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. Jesus said himself, no man can come to me except my father draws him and all that the father hath past tense given me will come to me. That's right. So you can't make the words lie. They are there for truth and for correction. And Moses was born with a gift of faith, great faith Moses had. We see it after a while coming out in him and he was born in a great family as we know how that his father and his mother and come from a family of Levi which the story here previously to this in the book of Exodus so beautifully gives the life of this great character and he was one of the greatest characters of the Bible for he was strictly a type of the Lord Jesus. He was born in a very odd birth like the Lord Jesus, he was born in the time of persecution. Like the Lord Jesus, he was born to be a deliverer. Like the Lord Jesus, he was a hid of his parents away from the enemy. Like the Lord Jesus, and he came to his time of service. Like the Lord Jesus, he was a leader. Like the Lord Jesus, he was a prophet. Like the Lord Jesus, he was a lawgiver. Like the Lord Jesus. And we find out that he died on the rock and he must have rose again and everything because 800 years later he was standing on Mount Transfiguration talking to the Lord Jesus. See? Angels packed him away. No one knows where he is buried. Even the devil didn't know that. Frankly, I don't believe he ever was buried. 
I believe that God packed him away and he died on the rock that he had followed all the days of his life. And he was a perfect type of Christ. He was a king over the people. He was a lawgiver. He was a sustainer for the people. He was everything in type that Christ was. Now, then see that he was born with these great gifts and quality within him. Then it only taken something to flash across that to bring that thing to life. See, the seed of God is actually placed in us from the foundation of the world. And when that light first strikes that seed, it brings it to life. But the light first has to come upon the seed. Like I've taught many times of the little women at the well, her in that condition, though she be an ill-famed person, though her life was degraded and she was in that condition because the traditions had never touched her, but though when that light first struck her, quickly she recognized it because there has something there to respond to it. When the deep calleth to the deep, there must be a deep somewhere to respond to that call. And Moses here was born this prophet, but he was raised in an intellectual school and Pharaoh's palace. The Pharaoh city he had was raised up under was a man still loved, had honor and believed Joseph being the prophet of the Lord. But there come Ramesses after Seti, and Ramesses did not care about Joseph, and so therefore there is when the trouble started. Now when there raised up a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph, but these great qualities, let's speak of them just a little while. And before we get to the main part of the text, I have an old way of setting a text, then building to it, and the Lord help us this morning as we build to it. Moses being born with this great gift of faith, then he was anointed and commissioned at the burning bush to deliver God's people. Now, seize what great qualities this man had. He was born for a certain thing. God had a purpose in it. God has got a purpose of you being here, see? If you can only be get to that place, how much trouble you save God and yourself too? Moses was born, and then he was afterwards, he was brought to the place where he was anointed. And notice the seedling there with an intellectual conception, with all the faith that he was born to deliver these people. And yet, it never came to life until that light from the burning bush flashed across it, until he seen not something he read about, but something he seen with his eyes. Something that spoke to him, and he spoke back to it. Oh, how that did bring things to life. I think any man with a woman, boy or girl, and I think in an intellectual conception of what they think the word is and so forth, never can have a full foundation stand until they have met that light that brings that word to a reality. I think no church in its practice, no matter how intellectual, and fundamental it might be, that church cannot thrive until the supernatural is made known among the people and they see it, something that they can talk to, that will talk back to them, that vindicates this written word. Now remember, when Moses met this burning bush, that word was vindicated exactly. It was the word. Moses didn't have to worry. What's his voice all about? What is this being here? Because God had already wrote on the scripture in Genesis that your people will sojourn in this strange land, but they'll be brought back after 400 years, will come back into this country again. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet fulfilled. Now, hundreds and hundreds of years before, God had said that Israel would sojourn and be mistreated in a strange country and would stay there 400 years, but God with a mighty hand will bring them out. So, you see, with this burning bush, Moses knew this intellectually, and the seed that was born in him was laying in his heart, and he tried through his intellectual experience with the word to try to bring them out to deliver them, because he knew he was born for the purpose. He knew that the time, the scriptures, all 
said that they had already been there 400 years. Just as we know now, as a man asked me a few moments ago about the coming and the rapture, we know we have lived the time out at the time of the rapture is at hand and we are looking for the rupturing faith that can pull the church together and give it some supernatural strength that can change this body that we live in when we see a God that can raise the dead off the floor or out of the yard and bring him back to life again and present him before us. When we see a God who can take a cancer that eats a man to a shadow and raise him up to a strong, healthy man that ought to give rotting faith to the people that when that light flashes from the sky and the trumpet sounds, the body of Christ will be quickly gathered together and changed in a moment and be taken to the heavens. Yes, there's got to be something like that happen and our schools of theology can never produce that. Yet, they intellectually are all right, but you've got to meet that light. You've got to find that something. And here Moses basing his great call upon the word, and it was great until one day he met this light, and the very word itself spoke back to him. Then he got his anointing, that anointed what he had in him. That's on the inside. He, the intellect that believed it, the faith that was based upon his belief in God, that separated him from his mother, and now when he strikes in the presence of this light it's anointed that he believed seeing what an anointing and he was commissioned now we know intellectually he had heard his mother he knew what he was going to take place and he knew he was living in that day but here he found out that he was a failure so he might have his faith might have dropped back a little bit but when he comes to the bush, God said, I heard, I have heard the cries of my people, and I remember my promise to their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I have come down, I, there, the personal pronoun, I have come down to deliver them. And now, and may I just add this, if God forgives me, if it sounds sacrilegious, I do not the work upon the earth, only through man. I am the vine, he are the branches, and I only declare myself when I can find a man and I have chose you, and I'm sending you down to take them out, see? Now notice it'll be with your mouth, and I, you take this rod, and Moses said, can I see an evidence that you'll send me, and you have anointed me, and you're going to do these things, said, what have you got in your hand? He said, a stick said throw it down it turned to a serpent he fled he said take it up he turned back to a stick said put your hands in your bosom took it out and it was leprosy put it back and it was healed said he saw the glory of god there was no more questions to moses did you ever notice he never ran to the wilderness again he knew he was anointed he knew where all these things that had been in his heart, these great fun qualities, and he, they were anointed now. He is ready. He is ready to go. So down toward Egypt he goes. God had said, I'll be with you. So that settles it. If I'll be with you, that's all Moses had to know for this great call in his heart. And so now God said, I'll be with you. Now, God also had vindicated his Moses' claims. Moses claimed, I met the Lord, and he said, Tell you, I am sent me. See? Now, they said, Here is a man, another Jew probably, some of these fanatics that's been coming along all the time with all this kind of a scheme to take us out of bondage. And you know how people are when they're slaves or in bondage. For something there is always some kind of a gimmick around coming around you know to do it so Moses God promised Moses I'll be with you I'll be with you my words will be your words and you speak my words and just see what I say and now when Moses went down and gave them this call and stood before Pharaoh and told him the Lord God of the Hebrews said bring the children out and he wouldn't let them go so he performed a sign before the elders and before Pharaoh. And the signs that God did, he said, now tomorrow 
about this time the sun will go down, it will be darkness all over Egypt, and it come to pass as exactly. And then he said, There is coming flies upon the land. And he stretched forth his rod and called for flies, and flies come. And he prophesied, and everything that he prophesied happened just exactly the way it was God, seeing God had called him from his birth, put qualities in him of great faith, and then come down with his presence, and anointed that great something in him, and sent him down with his word, and he was properly vindicated of his claims. No matter how many quacks had raised up, how many these other things had happened, God was speaking at Moses, was identified. Moses, what Moses said, God honored. I want you to never forget that word. What Moses said, God honored. Because God's word was in Moses. I'll be with your mouth. It'll speak the right things now. What God says, what God says, he speaks it through Moses. And it confirmed and vindicated his claims. Also, he was told by his mother of his mysterious birth and how that the time of Hanad come close to the hour that there was to be a deliverance. Amram and Jochebed, the sons and daughter of Levi, begin to pray to God to send a deliverer. And it take, when you see the time of the promise drawing nigh, it sets people to praying about and to hungering. And no doubt that Jochebed had told him many times his mother, as she was his tutor also, as we know the story. And he had told him how that she had prayed. And Moses, when you are born, son, you are a proper child, you are different. There was something taking place at your birth. I gave a drama on it for the children not long ago and said, while Amram was in the room praying, he saw an angel pull his sword and point it towards the north and said, you'll have a child, and he'll take the children north to the promised land, giving a little drama for the little fellows, so they'll understand it, that the intellect hasn't come up to the place that you, adults, can grasp the things as the Holy Spirit reveals it to you. Now, through his mother, had told him these things, and he knew this. Yeah, he needed another touch. The teaching was fine, but he needed a personal contact. That's what the world needs today. That's what the church needs today. That's what everyone needs. That's sons and daughters of God. In order to be that, you need a personal contact. See, something, no matter you know the word is true, you know it's right, but then when it contacts and then you see the thing done, then you know you are on the right road. See, and watch. It always be scriptural. It will stand right with the scripture. Cause this did. Amram's prayer was just exactly with the scripture. Their prayers was with the promised word. God promised at that time to do it. He prayed. They prayed for it. And here was a proper child born. And they watch. Oh, how I love this scene. In the hour that Pharaoh was putting to death all the children, see, putting them to the sword, the guardian sword. They starved these little children to death, fed them to the crocodiles, the little bodies until the crocodiles were perhaps fat upon the bodies of the Hebrew children. But the Bible said that the parents did not fear Pharaoh's command to kill the children. They didn't. They wasn't as scared because they seen something in his baby to begin with. They saw it, that this was the answer of prayer. And now Moses had all this as a background. So Moses knew he was sent for the very purpose to deliver the children of Israel. See all the background just heaps up when you get anything and can bring the Bible saying this is going to happen and here it happens and this is going to be at that time, here it happens and this is going to be at a certain time, there it happens, then it all accumulates together and draws a picture for us. Oh, how this tabernacle this morning, how we people of this hour, Brother Neville, as we see the gray striking our hair, and our shoulders stooping when we see the world weaving and rocking as it is, and how we can look around and see the promises drawing nigh, it's, think I, I think many times if someone could just bounce into it at once and wouldn't understand it, or would understand it rather and come into it at once, 
it will almost send you to eternity just with such a rapturing thing i never knowed it and just oh break through the things that we have seen and know and understand and all bounce in at one time the man or the woman boy or girl would just probably lift up their hands and say let's go lord jesus you see oh how the hour is so close moses knowing that he was born for that purpose and looked out of the windows and watched them hebrews as they toiled looked back here in the scripture and it said and they shall sojourn 400 years seeing but i will bring them out with a mighty hand then when he comes back after commission anointed know that he was born and his faith looked by faith he saw those people and he knew that they were the children of god because the world their word said so there wasn't of the world and wasn't like the rest of them they were different and they were cranks and fanatics to the high glam of egypt and he was to be the son of pharaoh taking the kingdom over and next but he there was something down in him a real faith that looked not at those things the glamour that he was to inherit he looked at the promise of god and he knew that the time was drawing nigh, and what that man must have thought of i want to talk it over with him someday when i meet him on the other side you say crazy brother no he isn't I'm going to meet him by the grace of God. Yes, sir, I'll talk to him someday, Moses himself, and how I would like to ask him just how, when he seen his preparation, how the frustration, the devil saying, ah, oh, the people ain't going to believe you. Ha ha, there is nothing to that. But when that seed comes to life up there, something struck him, and he knew there was something going to take place. He knew look at the clock and seen what time it was and he knew and how he must have thought and he watched now when he got all this together all this great thing that he seen at the scripture time the prayer of his mother and his father and he was born a peculiar birth an old child and all along there had been something way down in him and now he slips off and tries to think he would take his military training from his school and deliver the children in that field. Then he goes up into the wilderness and marries a lovely Ethiopian girl. And they had a little boy named Gershom. And one day while attending the flock, all at once he seen a burning bush up on top of the mountain burning. And he went up there and not an intellectual, not an imagination, not a delusion, an optical illusion, but in him, there was the God of Abraham in a light, a pillar of fire back in a bush, that fire like waves going out, but it didn't bother the bush. And the voice of the scripture, the voice of God spoke through there and said, I have chosen you. You are the man. I raised you up for this purpose. I'm proving to you here by signs you are going down to deliver the children because my word has got to be fulfilled. Oh, his word of this day has got to be fulfilled we are living in the hour no matter what anyone else says the word has to be fulfilled heavens and earth will pass away but not his word now when moses got all this together and seen every by every direction it anointed his faith amen oh my what a thought this self itself seeing the scripture pointing right straight to what it was and the speaking of god and the evidence of it there it anointed what faith he had in him to go to work what ought it to do to us we need an repentance we need a revival i'm saying myself seeing i need a shaking i need something i say i was speaking to myself this morning or about myself i need a wakening up and when I think of that great evidence, everything so perfectly laid out there and it anointed the faith of Moses. And my, he seen there was nothing. Here, he ran from Egypt with actually, he could have started a mutiny or something. And he could have, he could have rose up and started a revolutionary in Egypt. 
end, he could have took an army and fought. But you see, and had many thousands on his side. But instead of that, he was scared to even do that with armies on his side. But now here he comes back 40 years later, 80 years old, with only a stick in his hand. Why? What was burning down in his heart had become a reality. He was anointed then, and he knew he had thus said the Lord. There was nothing going to stop him now. He needed no army. God was with him. That's all he needed, God with him. Oh, when you know God has sent you to do a certain thing, and you see it moving up there, there just isn't nothing can take its place. That's all. I remember times when the Lord has told me about certain things was going to happen. And then I move up and see it laying right there. How? What a feeling. The situation is already under control. That's all. See? Because God said so. I remember many of you remember about a little boy being raised up in Finland. And then from the dead being killed by an automobile. And I stood there on the side of the road and started to walk away from that child and turn and look back. And Sam put his its hand on my shoulder and I thought it was Brother Moore. And nobody was around me. And I looked back and then I looked up the mountain I saw. I said, well, I've seen that hill somewhere. But we didn't come up this way. We come another way. Where is that hill? And I looked and seen that car down there wrecked. Seen that little boy there with his laying there with a crock like haircut, as we'd call it here. The eyes turned black like Brother Wei was the other day when he fell. And a little foot ran through the sock where his little limbs was broke and blood out of his eyes and nose and ears and seen his little short trousers and tied up by buttons. He is here and along the side of his little waist and his little stockings up like long stockings like we wore many years ago. And I look around and there was exactly, exactly the way the Holy Spirit had told me two years before when all of you wrote it in your Bibles across the nation that it would happen. Oh, there then, the situation is in hand. No matter how dead he is, no matter what anybody else is, it's all over. He's got to come back. I said, if this child doesn't raise up from the, this dead, then I'm a false prophet. I'm a misrepresentation of God. For in the homeland two years ago, he told me this would happen. And there, these ministers and all, it's wrote on the flyleaf of the Bible. And here he is exactly, read it off the flyleaf how it would be in a country lapping rocks and so forth be killed and on be on the right hand side of the road i said there it is nothing can stop it the situation is already under control the faith that was within my heart was anointed oh if i could only explain that that faith that god i had in god that told me and he never failed told me the situation is under control now here is exactly what i showed you two years ago and here it is laying just in exactly in order the only thing you have to do is speak the word and the little boy rose up from the dead see i was thinking and looking back at brother fred southman sitting there and brother banks wood and them the other day and up on the alaskan highway how i stood there <sighs> at the church and told you all of an animal that looked like a deer horn, 42 inches and a silver tip grizzly bear. I had never been there before and how the he that I was going to get this and how it would be and how many would be with me and how they'd be dressed, you know it, every one of you, weeks and weeks before it happened. And there, when I moved up in there, not knowing it, there laid the animal. And I went, and he, it was impossibility. If a hunter would know or be listening to this tape, how you can't walk up in the face of an animal, he'd jump up and run. But he didn't. And there he hangs in my den room. There hangs a silver tip, just exactly the way, and a rule laying there, a tape measure to show his exact. And a horn will at least shrink two inches or more. 
when it's green on the animal and when it dries but this never shrunk it is still exactly on the nose 42 inches in there lays the silver tip it's seven foot long just exactly and everything exactly the way it was laying there now but when this man said to me now look brother Branham, we got this animal that you uh, talked about but you told me you'd see a silver tip grizzly before you got to the bottom of the hill back to where them boys are that was with a gray green shirt I said, it's thus saith the Lord. God said so. But by Abraham, he said, I can see all over everything here for miles. There's nothing where is he coming from. I said, that's not for me to question. God said so. And he's Jehovah Jireh. He can bring a bear there. He could put one there. And he did. And there he is. It's a situation under control. And when Moses saw that he was raised for this purpose, he had met face to face this great God who had made the call and had anointed him and identified him and said, this is your call, Moses. I'm sending you and I'm going to show you my glory. And here I am in a bush burning. Go down there. I'll be with you. He didn't even need a stick. He had the word, the vindicated word, and there he went. It anointed that faith that was in him. And it anoints us when we see that we are living in the last days to find out that all these signs that we see been taking place that spoke of in the scripture will take place in the last days all the way from heaven to the political powers and the nature of the people and the demoralization of the world and among the women and how they would do in the last days and how the men will do, and how the churches will do, how the nations will do, and how God will do, and we see it all laying right here on us. Oh, it anoints our faith and move us out in the great cycle, see? It separates us from other things of the world, see? No matter how little we are, or how much a minority we are, how much we are laughed at, made fun of, don't make a bit of difference. That's all. We see it. There is something within us. We see. We were predestinated to see this hour, and there is nothing going to stop us from seeing it. Amen. Here God has spoken. It. It's already happened. We see it. Oh, how we thank God for this. Oh, when it brings out your faith. When you see these things happening here, now here again, we read that Moses esteemed the reproach of Christ of greater riches than the treasure of Egypt. Now he esteemed the reproach of Christ. Now remember the reproach of Christ, see, there is a reproach in serving Christ. And if you are very popular with the world, then you cannot serve. You're not serving Christ. No, you cannot because you see there is a reproach that goes with it. The world always has reproached. Way back there, thousands of years ago, there was a reproach that went with it. And Moses, to be Pharaoh, he was the next coming Pharaoh, Pharaoh's son, and he was coming the next Pharaoh with favor amongst the people. And yet he regarded esteem, means to regard, he regarded the reproach of Christ's greater things than all that Egypt could afford to give him. Egypt was in his hands, but yet he knew he, to take the way of Christ was a reproach. But he was so happy to know that there was something within him that made him regard this approach of Christ, the reproach of Christ rather, greater than all the glamour that he inherited. He had an inheritance inside of him that was far greater than what the outside inheritance had given him. Oh, if we could be like that today and let the Holy Spirit anoint us that we have within us that faith to a godly life consecrated to Christ. Now, with such faith as this that he had, he noticed and he regarded that reproach and honor. Today, somebody can say, hey, are you one of those people? Are those, aha, uh -huh. well, you are just a little ashamed of it. But he regarded it a treasure, a greater treasure than all the world, because that there was something in him that he could speak out and say, yes, I regard this. This is highly honorable. I'm glad to see 
to be one of them saying, I'm glad to number myself as a Hebrew and not an Egyptian. The Christians today should say the same thing. I'm glad to regard myself as a Christian to abstain from the things of the world and the order of the world, not just a church member, but as a born-again Christian who lives according to the scripture. Though I be called even by the members of the church a fanatic, yet I esteem that a greater thing than what if I was the most popular person in the city or in the nation. I'd rather be that than President of the United States or the King over the earth, you see. I esteem that so highly because God in his mercy, before the foundation of the world saw me and placed a little seed in there, that my faith would fly above these things of the world. And now he's called me and I regard my place. As Paul said, he regarded his office with high sin, and all oh, that God had called him from being a great teacher like Amelia. But Paul had to be called to be a sacrifice for Christ. See, now the same thing, notice, with such faith, he never relied on his sight, what he could see. Now he seen nothing out there with a bunch of mud handling people, slaves in prison, being killed every day, beat with whips, made fun of their religious beliefs, was fanatics, and there was a pharaoh sitting on the throne that didn't know or regard anything about the religion. He knew nothing about it. He was a heathen, so he just wore a picture of today. And there he is, a different religion, and how that if this Moses is yet in the very seat with the president or the great man, Pharaoh, to take his place at his death, and he was an old man, and yet Moses thought that that call, he looked out there, and the same window that Pharaoh looked out of, because he was in his home, and Pharaoh looked out and seen those people that were lifting up their hands, and they'd take a whip and beat them to death because they were praying. They ran a sword through them because they even failed to disobey at any time in making them work till their little bodies would fall out and give them half enough to eat. Well, there wasn't nothing but a bunch of fanatics, not hardly human. And yet Moses, that faith in him, looked upon them and he said, They are God's blessed people. Amen. I like that. With such faith, his eyes didn't fall on the glam of Egypt. It fell on the promises of God. His equal eye of faith seen beyond the glamour of Egypt. He, remember, he's becoming an eagle now. He is a prophet, and his eagle eye raises above those things. Oh, how I like that. Ha, huh, my, how often today Christians rely on their senses and of what they can see or what they can understand instead of their faith to rely on what you see with your eye and the glamour. Like you women, I'm always calling to you about you must let your hair grow out. You mustn't wear makeup. You must act like ladies and Christians. You look out upon the street and see the women today dress immorally. Well, you think, well, she belongs to the church. Why can't I do that thing? And she cuts her hair. Why can't I do that? Well, she seems just to be as sweet and as much intellectual and a personality that I haven't got. Personality that I haven't got. Well, why can't I do that? I ought to do it. When you do that, you paralyze your faith, seeing you don't give your faith a chance to grow. Start on that. As I have said, someone said by the Branham, the country, the people regard you as a prophet. You oughtn't to be bawling women out like that and men out for these things. You ought to be teaching them how to prophesy and receive gifts. I said, how can I teach them algebra where they don't even know the ABCs? See? Now, just start from that. Clean yourself up so that when you walk out on the street, you look like a Christian. Anyhow, see? And then go to acting like one thing and you can't do it within yourself. It's got to have Christ come within you and if that seed is laying in there and that light hits you, it's going to come to life. If it doesn't come to life, there was nothing 
there to come to life because it sure proved it on other things. It comes to life immediately as soon as the light hits it. That's a rebuke to women, I know. That's listening to you in to this tip, or we listen into it. It's a rebuke to you, sister. It should be. It should be because it shows I don't care what you've done. You might have been religious all your life. You might have lived in the church. Your father may be a minister or your husband might be a minister. But as long as you disobey the word of God, it shows there is no life there. When you see the things brought out and the life of the Holy Spirit, watch it when it strikes others. See what they do. If it brings it on them, no wonder why. What a rebuke to those Pharisees that called Jesus when he could perceive their thoughts. He called them Beelzebub. And that little prostitute said, Why, this fellow is a Messiah. The scripture says that he'll do this. See, that predestinated seed was laying there, and when that light struck it, it came to life. You can't keep it down. You can't hide life. You can take and pour concrete upon a bunch of grass and kill it in the winter time, the next spring, where is most your grass at, right around the edge of the concrete, cause that germitized seed under that stone, when the light be sun begins to shine, you can't hold it, it'll wiggle its way around through there and come right out at the edge of that and stick its head up to the glory of God. See, you can't hide life. When the sun strikes botany life, it's got to live. And when the Holy Spirit strikes the scriptural life that's in a man, it brings forth its fruit right there. Abraham snapped his fingers, see? So regardless of how true and honest you are, how you say you're not, and speaking, saying they were these women wearing these, these bad clothes and things out there, just a common striptease for the street. Though you don't believe you are, you can't make you believe, you can prove that you are innocent of an adultery. But in the book of God, you are committing adultery. Jesus said, whosoever looketh upon a woman to last after her, has committed adultery with her in his heart already. And you presented yourself in that manner, seeing you can't see it unless that life is laying there. You look at somebody else. You look and say, well, I know Sister Jones, Brother Jones, he's a minister. His wife does this and does that. I don't care what that does. This is the word. Jesus said, let every man's word be a lie. It might be true. It's a Bible. And when that light really strikes it, it's got to come to life. It just has to come to life. Now, Moses' great eye, his eagle eye, looked beyond the glamour of Egypt. The real Christian believer today, no matter what the church says, what anybody else says, when that light strikes and they see the very vindication of God, the pillar of fire hanging there, and the signs and wonders, the promise, the scripture being laid in, it comes to life. No matter how little it is and how many in the minority, God's group has always been the minority. See, fear not, little flock. It's your father's goodwill to give you the kingdom, see. They catch it. God is obligated to send them in from every denomination, every order, everywhere to see it. And if they are ordained to life, look at old Simeon, ordained to life. When the Messiah come in the temple in the form of a baby in his mother's arms, Simeon back in a room somewhere reading the Holy Spirit raised him up for he was waiting. That life was in him. He said, I'll not die until I see the Lord's Christ. And there was the Lord's Christ in the, the temple. The Holy Spirit led him from his duty out and walked down through there and picked that baby up and said, Let thy servant depart in peace, for my eyes have seen thy salvation. There was an old blind woman in the corner by the name of Anna who served the Lord day and night. She also was predicting and saying the Messiah is coming. I can see him coming. Yet she was blind. At that same time when he was there, that little life that was in her that was predicting, it could be there. It would be there. 
it will be there then that same life the light comes in the building in the form of a baby as an illegitimate child wrapped in swaddling clothes coming up through the building and the holy spirit struck that old blind woman and she come by the spirit led through the people and stood over this baby and blessed the mother and blessed the baby and told what would be the future for it see ordained to life see look at them there wasn't a dozen of them there was only eight souls saved in the days of noah hardly very many but all that was ordained to life come in at that time see how the holy spirit works in each age and drawing the people now we find out that moses faith led him to watch what would be not what was look at tomorrow instead of today Look at the promise instead of the grammar. Look at the people instead of the organization. See, God did that. Lord could see the glamour of prosperity down in Egypt or down in Sodom. Lord could see the possibilities of a lot of money. Lord could see the possibilities of when he looked over to Sodom and he could maybe become, being that he was a Hebrew, he may become a great man there because... He was a great intellectual figure and the nephew of Abraham. So he chose to go towards Sodom. Lot, intellect led him to see the glamour of prosperity. Lot's intellect led him to see the blessing of glamour, but his faith was so paralyzed by it, he didn't see the fire that was going to destroy that sort of a life. And that's the way people are today. They see the possibilities of belonging to a great organization. They see the possibilities of having social standing with the people of the city, but they don't see the possibilities. They don't see their faith is paralyzed. Let me repeat that so it won't be misunderstood. Women today, they, as I say, they want to act like the movie stars. The men today want to act like the television comedians. The preachers today seem to want to make the churches like some modernistic lord of some sort, membership and so forth. They see the possibilities of maybe becoming a bishop or a general overseer or something like that if they will go along with the church forsaking the scriptures when it's laying right before them with thoroughly vindicated by the power of God and by the living word of God living in the people yet they don't want it they say we don't want to get mixed up with something like that it would take their fellowship card it would take their denominational order yet honest men like Lot, sitting down in Sodom, knowing that that's wrong thing. See, what do they do when they do that? They paralyze the little faith that they did have. It can't work. Now Moses gave way to that. And he said his faith paralyzed the world. Either your faith will paralyze glamour, or either the glamour will paralyze your faith. Now, you have to take one or the other. And you see the Bible don't change. God don't change. He's the unchangeable God. And now we find today that people of this day, see, they look to the big things, the big organization. I belong to the so-and-so, see. And they go down there and look. There is so, there's no different from the street people. There is no other things. They have an intellectual something and go on. When you talk about divine healing, the pillar of fire, the light of God, they say that's mental. A man picked up the picture of the angel of the Lord the other day, a Baptist minister, and laughed at it. See, that's blasphemy. See, there is no forgiveness for that. That's what Jesus said. See, it's blasphemy. When you see it doing the very works of Jesus that Christ did, and he said when they seen that works in Christ, he was a sacrifice, and they called him Beelzebub, a devil, for cause he was doing it. And now they say, he said, I forgive you for that. But when the Holy Ghost comes to do the same thing, you speak a word against it, it will never be forgiven you. In this world or the world to come, see? Just one word is all you have to say against it, see? And then, because if that's life, if you have been 
ordained to eternal life, then that life will burst forth when you see it. You will recognize it, like the little woman at the well and the different ones. But if it's not there, it can't come to life, for there's nothing there to come to life with. As my old mother used to say, you can't get blood from a turnip because there is no blood in it. Now, that's the same thing, and it parallelizes what the little faith you you have got. Lord could see the glamour, but he didn't have enough faith to see the fire that will destroy such glamour. I wonder if we have today, I wonder if us, well, as a woman that wants to be popular, that wants to act like the rest of the women in the church, if they see that they want to act like the rest, they can see the possibilities of being a prettier woman. By being painted, they can see a prettier woman by having a young appearance, by cutting their hair and acting like some of the others or the movie star. But I wonder if that hasn't paralyzed their faith to know that the Bible says that a man, the woman does that is an, an honorable woman and a woman that puts on a garment that pertains to a man is an abomination before God, slacks and so forth and shorts that they are wearing. And it just becomes so calloused still, it becomes a regular routine of the people doing it. I wonder if they don't paralyze the very little faith that you had even to go to church. You see, that's the thing it does. Lord did that, and it paralyzed him, and it paralyzed his people down there. They couldn't see it. But Abraham, with a vindicated faith, his uncle, he looked not upon the glamour. He wanted nothing to do with it, though he had to live hard and live to himself. And Sarah lived out in the wilderness, where it was hard goings on the barren ground. But they see not the glamour or the possibilities of becoming popular. Sarah, the most beautiful woman in the land, the Bible said so. She was fair, the fairest of all the women. And now she even stayed and obeyed her husband to even she called him her Lord, who the Bible refers to plump over in the New Testament, said, whose daughters you are as long as you obey the faith. See, calling her husband her Lord. And the angel of the Lord visit the temple and or the little tent out there and told them they didn't even have a house to live in, living out in their barren lands. And there you are. You see the day patterned back again, just exactly like it was then. Now Moses, with his great faith again, could say no to the present things of the present world and make a righteous choice. He could he chose to suffer the afflictions with the people of the God. He chose to go with it. Why? His faith. He saw the promise. He saw the end time. He saw over in tomorrow and he let his faith loose and he didn't pay any attention to what his eyes saw in the possibilities here. That he was the Pharaoh and was going to be Pharaoh. The Pharaoh. He looked plumb over in tomorrow. Oh, if people could only do that. Don't, didn't see the present world. If you look at the present world, you make a choice with it. Hide your eyes from that and look at the promise of God way over in tomorrow. By his faith, he could choose. And he did choose to be called the son of Abraham and refused to be called the son of Pharaoh. How could he, when all the king, the whole kingdom, just Egypt, had the world whipped? He was king of the world and was a young man of 40 years old here ready to take the throne but he never looked at these intellects look at the women who would have laid around him day by day harems of them look at the glamour sit and drink wine and watch a striptease before him as they dance and find him with her and uh, women from all over the world and the jewels and the treasures his army out there the only thing he had to do is sit and eat his fine food and say, send an army garrison, number so-and-so, down to so-and-so, take that nation, I believe, I just want it. That's all he had to do, sit there and then fund him and hold his mouth open, let the lovely, beautiful striptizers of that day pour wine into his mouth, feed him with his food, with their arms around him, all the prettiest women in the world, all the glamour that there was, was laying right there by him. But what did he do? He looked away from that. He knowed fire was there ready for that. He knowed death lead in that line. See, he knowed that it was. And he looked over to a bunch of despised and rejected people. And by faith, he chose to suffer the reproach of Christ.
and called himself I am a son of Abraham. I'm no son of this Pharaoh. Though you make me a bishop or a deacon or archbishop or a pope, I'm no son of this thing. I'm a son of Abraham and separate myself from the things of the world. Amen. Amen and amen. By faith he did that. He took the glamour away. He took the possibilities of being the next bishop. He took the possibilities of being the next archbishop or the next general overseer at the next election or whatever it was. He took that away. He refused to look at it. Now, if I become the bishop, I'll walk in and the people say, Holy Father, or Dr. So-and-so, or Elder So-and-so, how they'll, all the ministers at the gathering, they'll pat me on the back and say, say, boy, that guy has got something. I'm telling you, shh, keep still. Here comes the bishop, see what he says. That's law. See, here comes the so-and-so. People will fly over the world to be, to see the Pope and kiss the foot and the rings and so forth. How? What a possibility to the Catholic. What a possibility to the Protestant to be bishop or general overseer or something, some great man in an organization looking. Though, but you see, the eye of faith looks over the top of that and you see the end of it. Down there, which God says, the whole thing will be destroyed. Faith, that eagle eye lifts you up above that. And you see tomorrow, not today, and choose to be called a son of Abraham. Pharaoh, with no children, with no faith, seen God's children as a fanatics. No faith, he made them slaves because he wasn't scared of what he said. He wasn't afraid of God. He thought that he was God. He thought his gods that he served, that he was a bishop, he was the head, general overseer, his gods, is the one that did it. Nothing to this thing here. So he made them slaves. He laughed at them, made fun of them, just as the people did today. The same thing exactly. Moses' faith seen them in the promised land. A blessed people. It might be a hard fight to get them to the promise, but Moses chose to go with them. How I could lay on that, but my time is getting away, you see. Notice, it might be a hard thing to turn on those people around. You have to go live with them. You have to be one of them. And they are already so intellectual that you can't move them, see. But there's got to be something happening out there. There's got uh, the supernatural demonstrated before them. It's going to be a hard thing. The organizations will turn you down and all these things will happen. It will, it's terrible that you have to do, but yet make your choice. I'm one of them, yeah, his faith did that. His faith sparked, yes sir, he saw it. It was a hard thing to get them to that promise, but he took his choice to go with them anyhow, regardless of what they did to him and what they turned him down. He went anyhow, he was going out with them. Now I hope, you are reading. All right. Go with them anyhow. Make, be one of them. That's right, because it's your duty. Might be a hard fight, but a lot of to go through. But go anyhow. But his faith led him to take the choice of the word. And not the glamour, he took the word. That's what Moses' faith did. When faith looks on God's worst, remember, here was the glamour now, the world, the highest, the king of the world. And where was God promised? In a mud hole, with a mud dabbers. But when faith, when faith looks at God's worst, it esteems it greater and more valuable than the best the world can show. Yes, sir. When faith looks at it, when faith can see it, when faith in the word can see the word made manifest, it's more to them than all the glamour and archbishopry and everything else that you can speak of. Faith does it seem. You can see the worst, the despised, the rejected, the whatever it might be, let it be at its worst, and yet faith will esteem that a million miles higher than the best. The world can produce, amen. That's the way we 
sing that song i'll take the way with the laws despise few see oh my for you see faith sees what god wants done oh i hope this goes in faith doesn't look at the present time faith doesn't see this here faith looks to see what god wants and it works accordingly that's what faith does it sees what god wants and what god wants done and faith operates through that faith is a long range vision it don't lower its sights it holds to the target amen any good shooter knows that see that's its long range it's a telescope it's a binocular that you don't look around here you don't use binoculars to see what time it is see you don't use that but you use binoculars to look away off and faith does that faith picks up god's binoculars both of them both sides the old and the new testament the new and the old testament and sees every promise that he made and faith sees it out yonder and faith chooses that regardless of what the present tense is here he looks at the end he don't stop his sights down to look this way he looks out yonder he keeps the crosshair dead center on the word that's what faith does that's what faith that's in a man that does those things now watch what pharaoh called a call what pharaoh called a great god called an abomination pharaoh could look pharaoh could say look moses here why the next pharaoh i hand this scepter to you when i leave here i'll hand the scepter it's yours see now this is great you're going to be there a great man moses you're going to be the bishop you're going to be this that or the other don't leave us you stay here but you see he called that great and god said it was an abomination now you women think a minute so you men what the world calls great god calls filth don't let the bible say it's an abomination for a woman to wear a garment that pertains to a man and you think you are smart in doing it see you're just displaying human flesh for the devil and that's all so don't do it and you men who live after the things of the world and huddle and cuddle after this and you men with not enough audacity about you to make your wives and things quit doing that shame on you and call yourself sons of god looks like a sodomite to me see not to hurt your feelings but to tell you the truth love is corrective it always is the mother won't take care of a child and correct it and spank it and make it mind it's not much of a mother for it that's right now and watch what takes place now moses saw this by his vision and pharaoh said that this is great god said it's a abomination so god moses chose what god said now notice faith sees what god wants you to see faith sees what god sees and a reasoning and senses see what the world wants you to see notice the reasoning why it's only human sense it's only only reason that this is well it ain't this just as good see that's just exactly when you use those senses which is contrary to the word see then that's what the world wants you you to see but faith don't look at that faith looks what god said see you know you cast down reasonings reasonings reason reasoning senses see what the world wants you to see big denomination well are you a christian oh i'm a presbyterian methodist lutheran pentecostal what more and this that or the other sin that senses i belong to the first church you see oh i'm catholic i am this that see you say that now that that senses you like to say that because it's a denomination something big well we got more members nearly than any church in the world see we but there is only one real church and you don't join it you're born in it see and if you are born in it the living god works himself through you and make himself known see that's where god dwells in his church god gives to church every day just lives in church he lives in you you are his church you are his church you are the tabernacle that god dwells in you are the church of the living god yourself and if 
the living God lives in his living being, then your action is of God. If it isn't, then God isn't in there. He wouldn't make you act like that. When he says in the word here, his blueprint, don't do it. And you go do it. See, that's wrong. When you deny it, then that shows the life isn't even in you. See, that's right. Faith led Moses to the path of obedience. Notice, Moses make, there is young Pharaoh, there is young Moses, both of them with the opportunity. Moses in the reproach of the people and counted it greater treasures than all Egypt had. And he led by faith, he followed what his faith said in the word, and it led him to the path of obedience, and finally to glory, immortal, never to die in the presence of God, sight and senses, led and glamour, led Pharaoh to his death and the destruction of Egypt, his nation, and it's never come back since. And there you are. Look at this, you die. Look at that, you live. Now make your choice. That's the same thing God put before Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, seeing by faith you make your choice. Now tonight, sight led Pharaoh to his death and to destruction of his city. Moses, with his faith, never did fear Pharaoh. See, he didn't care what Pharaoh said. He cared not about Pharaoh no more than his mother and his daddy cared about their threats. When Moses was confirmed to him, and he was that person that was to deliver the Egypt or lead Israel out of Egypt, he never cared what Pharaoh said. He wasn't scared of him. Hey, many, many men, you see what I mean? There is no fear in faith. Faith knows about it. Faith as I've always said, it's got a great big muscles and hairs on his chest. Faith said, shut up, and everybody shuts up. That's all. I know where I'm at. The rest of them say, well, then maybe he does, see? But you've got to stand up and show your muscles. That's all. Faith does it. Notice Moses never feared Pharaoh after God had vindicated his call. When Moses believed he was called for that, but when God told him up there, it's so, and come down and showed before Pharaoh and all the rest of them that he was sent to do it, Moses was never scared of Pharaoh. Notice Pharaoh used his wisdom on Moses though. Watch, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you an agreement with you. After the plagues then eat him up, he said, I'll make an agreement with you. You just go for a little worship. Three days. Just go so far and don't go no further. But you know the, that was Pharaoh's senses told him that, see? You just go so far and don't go no further. <laughs> Haven't we got that kind of today? If you just join the church, that's all right. But you know, the faith that Moses had didn't believe in a so far religion. He said, we're all going. We are going all the way. That's right. We're going to the promised land. We just don't go out here and make a nomination and stop. We go on through. Amen. I'm going on to the promised land. God promised us. How many pharaohs have we got today standing in the pulpit, heads of organizations now? If you do, just do this and do that. That's all. See? Well, see, just so far. But Moses said, oh, no, 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 see? Pharaoh said, well, why not? If you're going to have the kind of a religion, I'll tell you what, what you do. Just go and the elders go worship, see? Just you and the elders go worship because you all can have that kind of religion, but don't get it among the people. You know what Moses said? There won't even be a hoof left behind. We are going all the way. We are all going. I'm not going unless they go. And as long as I'm here, I'm on your hands. Amen. I'm not going unless they can go too. And that's all. Oh, what a gallant servant. Amen. I want to take them with me just because I've got it and I sit down and say, well, now this is all right. No, sir. We want the people too. Every one of us is going. Amen. He said we ain't going to even leave sheep or anything behind. There's not going to be a hoof left back. We're all going to the promised land. Amen. Every one of us, whether 
you are a housewife or whether you are a little maid or whether you are an old man old woman or a young man or an old man or whatever you are we are going anyhow there isn't going to be one of us left amen every one of us is going and we ain't going to stop nothing else that's right my then religions was really in a debate there wasn't it oh my moses no moses did not believe in this year just of a religion he didn't believe in that aha uh -huh, yes sir oh my we could stay all day on that but i got to get to my uh, text after a while and i start preaching notice notice this how beautiful just i love this you know finally pharaoh said get out god just plagued him with the voice of moses he struck everything he done everything there was to be done he stopped there put the sun down in the middle of the day he done everything else he blackened the days he brought frogs fleas lice everything else fire smoke and death to his families and everything else he done everything till finally Pharaoh had to say get out that's all you got and go oh my praise be to god i'm so glad that a man can so completely serve god till he the devil don't know what to do with him that's right just obeyed god so completely till the devil said oh my get away i don't want to hear it no more that's right you can do it so completely now if god wouldn't have backed up moses then he would become a laughing stock but god was right there confirming everything he said come to pass and pharaoh had to hold his position because he was a bishop you know so he had to stay there he couldn't deny he couldn't say no but it was already happening see he couldn't he couldn't deny it because it was already happening so finally he said oh just get out i don't want to hear you no more get out of here take all you got and go oh my now we find moses here after god had done so much for him and had showed him so many signs and wonders now for the next 15 minutes let's lay this down here and watch you cross moses come to this spot where he god had said i am with you your words is my word i proved it to you moses you when there was no flies in the land it was out of season and you said let there come flies and there come flies that's creation who can bring darkness over the earth but god he said let there be darkness and there was darkness you said let there be frogs and the frogs even got in pharaoh's house in the beds and when pharaoh piled them up in the great heaps creator and i have spoke through you moses and made my word create through your lips i've made you actually a god for pharaoh yes sir i've done all this and here they come to a place a little trial come up and moses didn't begin to cry what shall i do i want you to notice this is a great lesson here now i love this see moses if we read here right that when the children begin to get scared they see pharaoh coming after in the line of duty god had performed everything perfectly now he started them on their journey he's got the church together they've been called out they come from every denomination they all got together moses had went back there and said lord what must i do he'd say well go do this all right go ahead now moses you know i've called you to do this yes lord all right you go speak this and i'll be here comes the flies speak for this and here it come do this here it come everything was thus say the lord thus say the lord thus say the lord now he gets into a, a trouble and god said now i've got them started on their journey they are all done called out the church is together so i've got them on their journey now moses take them on over i've told you to 
I'm going to sit down and rest a while. Moses said, Oh Lord, look coming, here comes Pharaoh. The people are all, what must I do? What must I do? See there, isn't that just human beings? Yes, sir, begin to cry. What must I do? Here, we see Moses expressingly fully human nature always wants God to get behind you and push you into something. Now, that's us today. You want God, after we've seen all we have seen, yet you want God to push you to do something. See, Moses had just laxed around, said, God, I'll go with, ask you, see what you say. Yeah, you say it. Well, all right, I'll say it too, see. But here God had ordained him for the job, proved that he was with him. And here he is, the circumstance comes up. And then he begins to cry, what can I do, Lord? What can I do? Now you remember, he had already prophesied here, for he said, these Egyptians that you see today, you'll see them no more. And then immediately begin to cry out, God, what can we do? See, after he done a pretty good job in prophesying there, you see. He then told them what would happen if the word of God was in him, it was in him. And when he was telling that it actually come to pass, what he said was already going to come to pass. And here he was crying out, what am I going to do? Oh, if that isn't human beings, if that isn't me, if that isn't me, see, he had already proved what you see will happen, I'm with you. And here a circumstance rose in a moment what must i do what must i do lord hey lord where are you at hey do you hear me what must i do and he had already ordained him and abdicated him and proved and worked everything through him and here god oh my fully expressing man wants to rest and let god do this pushing and yet he knew that god had anointed him for this job to do this and God had clearly vindicated his claims it was for the people to be delivered God through his miracles and wonders had drawn them all together in one group you follow me brought them all together in one group vindicated his claims scripture says so here was a sign here was evidence here everything that he said then he come among them as a prophet Ever, whatever he said, God honored it, even to create and bring up flies and brought things in existence and everything that he had promised him, here he done it. But he wanted to wait on that, saith the Lord. See, he should have known that the very vindication of his call was that, saith the Lord. His job that he was ordained to was that, saith the Lord. Can you get it? Uh -huh. Why did he wait on that, saith the Lord? He wanted lord what can i do here i brought these children out here this far here is a circumstance pharaoh is coming they're all going to die what must i do what must i do harm he had already predicted what they was going to do he had already told just exactly what to do it he predicted the end of the very nation he was brought up in i hope you understand huh moses had already said You'll not see them anymore. God is going to destroy them. They made fun of you long enough. God will destroy them. He had already predicted what would happen to them. Then, Lord, what must I do? See the human nature there. See, what must I do? I'm going to wait for that, say the Lord. Yes, sir. I'll see what the Lord says. Then I'll do it. Huh? Remember, there was a Pharaoh that raised up that didn't know joseph you know in that time right at that time see and moses stood right up and predicted the end of the nation of that nation and here he was right to the place where it was to be happening then he cries out what must i do lord what must i do see isn't that human beings isn't that just human nature what shall i do huh he was already prophesied. God had honored everything he said, and he was called for the job. So why did he have to say, what must I do? There was a need. 
it was just up to him to speak for it. God wanted Moses to put that gift of faith that he had given him to work. God had vindicated it. It was a truth. And God wanted Moses, wanted the people to see that he was with Moses. And he, back there, he waited. Say, now, Lord, I'm just a baby. Let you tell me now, yeah, I'll go do this. I got that, say the Lord. Brother, if, is that, that, say the Lord, yes. Brother Moses, that's, that, say the Lord, yeah. Okay, we got it now. And that's, say the Lord, and it happened. Never failed one time, never did fail. And here it is in the circumstances, comes up again. Now he's got him on the journey. The church is already called out, got them on the journey, and they're moving up. And Moses started crying, Lord, is it that saith the Lord? What must I do? All right. God wanted Moses to have faith that he had put in, in the gift that he had clearly vindicated. God had clearly proved to Moses and the people that it was him by the word and by the things that was said come to pass. It was clearly identified. There was no need of him worrying any more about it, see? There was no more of him thinking anything about it because it was already cleared up. He had already done these things and he already proved by flies and fleas that he spoke things into creation that the word of God was in him. So here he is going to ask now ask what to do then the circumstances lays right before him see oh my i hope this goes way down to us and we can see where we're at see don't it make you feel about that big thinking about moses telling his faults and look at ours yeah see here he was standing there see nod that the scriptures said that that was the hour and day for that to happen and knowed that God had met him in a pillar of fire and it went right down before the people and performed these miracles and everything he said it come to pass even to bringing things into creation doing the things that only God could do showing that his voice was God's voice and here he was the circumstance with that people that he was raising up, bringing on to the promised land, and then was standing crying, what must I do? That's a human being. Want to just, as brother Roy Slaughter, I believe he is sitting outside the door there, told me one time about somebody doing something to me. And I said, well, I did this. And now is that. He said, brother Branham, let them lean on your shoulder today and tomorrow you pack them and that's just the way human beings is leans on your shoulder today and tomorrow you pack them that's it that's what moses was doing god had to pack him along after he had ordained him and proved it to do it and the people ought to have said moses say the word i seen you do it there God honored you there, and you are the same one today. Amen. See, do it. Amen. He ought to have known it, but he didn't. All right. Just as it was then, so is it now. We find out that. So he said, Moses, God must have got enough of it. God must have got fed up on it. He said, why are you crying to me about? Haven't I already proved my identification? Haven't I told you that I sent you for the job? Didn't I tell you to go do this? Didn't I promise that I'll do this? That I'll be with your mouth and I'd speak through you and I'll do this and show you, you'd show signs and wonders. Didn't I promise to do it? Have not I did just exactly and destroyed every enemy from around you? And here you are standing out here now at the red sea right in the land of duty what i told you to do and then still hollering and crying to me don't you believe me can't you read that i've sent you to do this oh if that isn't human being my so he 
he must have got pretty well fed about it on it and he said you know you have need of it you know if you're going to take these children over to the promised land that's exactly you're penned up here in a corner and there ain't nothing else you can do so there's a need what are you crying to me about what are you looking at me for what you calling on me about haven't i proved it to the people haven't i proved it to you haven't i called it is in scriptural didn't i promise to take these people to the land didn't i call you and tell you i would do it didn't i call and see i had sent you to do it that it wasn't you it was me and i'd go down and i'd be with your lips and whatever you said i would have indicated it and proved it haven't i done it then when any little thing comes up why you act like a baby you ought to be a man speak to the people amen then move forward amen there you are don't cry speak amen oh i like that why are you crying to me about just speak to the people and go forward to your objective whatever it is if it's sickness or whatever it is to raise the dead or whatever it is speak i've proved it speak to the people what a lesson what a lesson oh my at this stage of the journey where we are standing look where we are at now yes sir at the third pool notice we are right here at the door of the coming of the lord he was anointed for the job and still waiting for the saith the lord god must have got enough of it he said don't cry anymore speak i sent you oh god what this church ought to be this morning with god's perfect vindication with the pillar of fire and the signs and the wonders everything just like it was in the days of sodom he said it would return back here is the world in its condition there is a nation in its condition here is the women in the condition there is the man in the condition there is a church in the condition there is everything the elements the signs flying saucers and everything in the skies and all kind of serious things and the sea roaring tidal waves men's hearts feeling fear a plex of time distress between nations the church falling away and the man of sin rising up who upholds himself above all who is called god he that sitteth in a temple of god showing himself oh my and has come to this nation and the church has organized and all of them gather together as hallows to the whole and everything exactly the way in their way hodom hodom what is it telling women they can cut their hair telling women they can wear shorts telling men they can do this and they can do that and the preachers and they do this and a social gospel and things don't you see it's committing adultery with the true word of god and god has sent us his true word and denominational no strings tied to it and give us the pillar of fire the holy ghost that's been with us now for 30 years and everything that he has predicted and said come to pass exactly the way he did it speak to the people and let's go forward amen we got an objective that's glory let's move to it we are headed to the promised land all things are possible to them that believe speak to the people haven't i proved it haven't i even had my picture made among you and everything else and done everything that could be done and to prove that i'm with you doesn't the magazines just a few weeks ago packed the article when you said here at the pulpit what will take place out here when and three months beforehand and there it went taking place and vindicate even the science knows about it and everything that i've done and you're still waiting speak to the people and go forward to your objective amen didn't nathan tell david nathan the prophet one time sitting seeing david the anointed king he said do all that's in your heart for god is with you I told david do all that's in your heart god is with you joshua was anointed to take the land for god and for his people the day was short he needed more time for the job and he was anointed and commissioned to do 
Joshua, a man, he was anointed. God told him, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you. Amen. That land, I'm going to give it to them. And I want you to go over there and clean out the Amalekites and the Hittites, all the others, the Philistines and the Perizzites and all the different ones. Clean them out. I'm with you, Al. No man will stand before you all the days of your life. No man can even bother you. Go on in there. And Joshua drawed that sword and said, Follow me. And he got over there and he said he was fighting. And what was it? He routed the enemy. There were little bunches here and little bunches there. When the nighttime came, they would all get together and garrison together and come with a big force against him. And the sun was going down. He needed more light. The sun was going down. He didn't fall on his knees and say, Oh Lord God, what shall I do? What shall I do? He spoke. He had a need. He said, Son, stand still. He didn't cry to nothing. He commanded, Son, stand still. I've got a need of this. I'm the servant of the Lord, anointed for this job, and I got a need. Stand still. And don't you shine. And moon, you hang where you're at till you fought the battle through and whipped the whole thing down and the son obeyed him. No crying out. He spoke to the son, said, You stand still. Son, hang there. And moon, you stay where you are at. He didn't cry out, Lord, now what can I do? Give me some more sunlight. He had need of sunlight. So he commanded it, and the son obeyed him. Oh my, he commanded the son to stand still. Samson, anointed, raised up, ordained of God, given a gift of power, was ordained to destroy the nation of the Philistines, ordained, born on the earth, anointed of God, to destroy the Philistines. And one day they caught him out in the field with his sword, without a spear, and a thousand of those armored Philistines ran upon him at one time. Did he get down and say, Oh Lord, I'm waiting for a vision. Oh Lord, what must I do? Direct me now what to do. He knew he had a need. He found something but an old job on a mule and he beat down a thousand Philistines. Amen. He never cried to God. He used his anointed gift. He knew that he was sent for the job. He knew he was born for that. He knew he was anointed with a gift. And he beat down a thousand Philistines. He didn't cry to God. God had done him and vindicated that he was by other things that he had done. And he was a vindicated, anointed servant of God to destroy the Philistines. And he did it. No matter what the circumstances was, he did it. He never asked nothing. That was his job. That God was dealing with him. Picked up that mural bone and go to beating Philistines. How the why one lick with it, with that thing across one of them, inch and a half brass scars like that, would have shattered that bone into a million pieces. And he beat a thousands of them down and killed them and still stood with it in his hand. He didn't ask no questions. He didn't cry out. He spoke. He wrote to them, Oh my, take the Philistine. Can I take the Philistines, Lord? I know you sent me to do it, Lord. Yes, Lord. I know you sent me to destroy this nation of the Philistines. Now here, a thousand of them around me, and I ain't got nothing. What am I going to do now, Lord? Oh, my nothing going to bother him. He's anointed for the work. There is nothing can harm you. No, not one thing. Hallelujah. He just took what he had and beat into them. That's right. When the enemy fenced him in, said, now we get him in the walls. We got him now. We got him on the inside here. And with this woman, now we got the door shut all around everywhere. And he can't get out. We got him. Samson didn't cry out, oh Lord, they got me all fenced in with this denomination. Huh? What am I going to do? I have joined up with them. What am I going to do? He never did that. He just walked out and pulled on the gate and put it on his shoulder and walked away with it. Amen. He was anointed for the job. He was called of God. 
didn't fancy him in. No, indeed, he took the gates with him. He didn't pray about it. He didn't ask God whether to do it or not. It was right in the line of duty. Amen. Right in the line of duty. Why cry to me? Speak and go on. Amen. Don't cry. Speak. He done not quit whining and whimpering now. Ought to be old enough to speak. That's right. He knew his anointed gift of power will destroy any Philistine that stood before him. Amen. But we don't know what that. You see, we are still little babies with a bottle in our mouth. He knew it. He knew that God raised him up for that purpose. And there was nothing going to stand before him all the days of his life. Nothing could destroy him. He was raised for that purpose. He, like Moses, was nothing going to stop him. No Amalekites or nothing else could can stop him. He is on the road to the promised land. Samson, he knew he was on the road. Joshua knew he was taking the land. He was vindicated. God's word promised it and the Holy Ghost was there vindicating it. He was on his road, so there was nothing going to stand in his way. No, sir, right in the line of duty with God, there was nothing going to stand in his way. So he just picked up the gates and put them on his shoulder, weighed about four or five tons and walked up on top of the hill and sat down on them. Nothing going to stand in his way. He had an anointed gift from God. He didn't have to cry out, Lord. What must I do now? He was already anointed to do it. That way was thus saith the Lord. Get rid of them. Hallelujah. Get rid of them. I've raised you up for the purpose. Amen. What must I do, Lord? Okay. What am I going to do here at the Red Sea? Didn't I tell you that I give you a mountain for a sign out there? You're coming back to that mountain and you're going to take these children to the land. Didn't I call you for that purpose? What are you worried about anything else? Stand in the way. Speak and start moving. Amen and amen. Yeah, I called you for this purpose. David, he knew he was anointed with a vindicated to be a good shot. He knew that they knew he was a good shot. David was anointed, he knew it, and when he stood before Goliath, he never cried, Oh God, what must I do now? Wait, must I know what you did in the time past? You let me kill a bear and you let me kill a lion, but what about this Goliath out here? Huh? He never did that, he just spoke. What did he say? You will be like they were. He spoke and went forward. He never prayed a prayer. He never offered nothing. He knew he was anointed. Amen. He was anointed and that slingshot had proved the right kind of a thing. He had faith in his anointing. He had faith that God could direct the rock right straight in the middle of that helmet there where the only place could be hit. He was standing there. He knew he was a good shot. Amen. He knew God made him that. Amen. He knew he had killed a lion. He knew he had killed a bear. But that was with his earthly father's possession. Here is his heavenly father's possession. Amen. I didn't get down. Must. What must I do, Lord? Now, Lord, he spoke and said, You will be like the lion and the bear. And here I come. Amen. Glory to God. Yes, sir. I spoke and I went forward. To meet this Goliath, oh my, regardless of his size, he was a little ruddy looking fellow, you know, he wasn't very big, he wasn't very handsome to look at, a little bit drawn up sort of a fellow, the Bible said he was ruddy. Now, regardless of his size and his so-called ability to do so, you know, the bishop told him, said, now, look here, son, that man is a theologian, see? He is a fighter. He was born a fighter. And he's a, he's been a fighter from his youth. And you're no match for him. And his brother said, Oh, you naughty thing. Come out here to do such a thing as that. Go on back home. That didn't bother him. Why? He knew he was anointed. The God that delivered me from that lion, the God that delivered me from the paws of that bear, he'll 
more than that deliver me from that philistine here i come i meet you in the name of the lord god of israel amen didn't pray through he was already prayed through god prayed him through before the foundation of the world he was anointed for the job he had to speak and go forward that's all there was to do about it just speak and go forward oh that's all there is to it oh he didn't about his denominational brothers them scoffers were standing there too you know oh yes they were standing there scoffing saying scoffing and making fun and saying his brothers you know and see oh 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 can't you can't you are just naughty that didn't move him a bit you want to be uh, different from somebody else he just wants to show off if that had been showing off it had been so and they only looked at the intellectual side david knew the anointing was on him amen didn't make any difference to him he said that philistine will be like the bear and lion so here i come he predicted it before it happened what did he do he killed the bear he killed the lion he knocked the lion down with what with with the his slingshot and took a knife and then the bear lion he killed the lion with a knife that's the same thing he done goliath he knew him down with a rock and pulled up his sword and cut his own head off right there before it what did he predict before it happens and you will be as they are why he spoke the word that it would be and then went forward to make it be fulfilled amen oh brother he spoke and took over the situation that day if there ever was a time that a man should speak it's now closing just the next few minutes if you can just bear a few minutes longer i got some more things wrote down here some scriptures i want to get to peter never cried when he found a man that had faith enough to be healed laying at the gate called beautiful he never got down and had an all-night prayer meeting no night prayer and all an all-day prayer a big long prayer and said lord i pray you now that you'll help this poor layman i see that he's got faith i know he's a believer and i've asked him and he i he said he had faith and he would believe what i told him and i've told him about that about what you did and i just think now lord that can you give me a that said the lord for him no he knew that he was an anointed apostle he knew that jesus christ commissioned him heal the sick raise the dead cleanse the lepers cast the devils as freely as you received freely give he said peter go do that he didn't have to pray through he was commissioned what did he say he said in the name of jesus christ he spoke the name of jesus christ and the man just laid there and he picked him up by the hand and said stand up on your feet and he held him there till his ankle's bones got strength and he started walking why he never had an all night prayer meeting he never cried out to god he knew positive from the lips of jesus christ he was anointed for this work here yeah? he speak and raised him up for the he knew he was anointed for the apostle for the purpose the people that laid in his shadow never said oh come apostle peter and cry over us and pray the prayer of faith for us to god no no they never said that they knew he was anointed and have indicated apostle of god so they said just let us lay in his shadow you don't have to say a word we know it we believe it lives within them the apostle couldn't get to them all so they themselves they are part of it moses said it's just not me going we are all going we we all got something to do we all got to be anointed and they seen the apostle standing there and see him heal the sick man and do the things he did they know 
he couldn't get to them, said, They never said, Peter, come and offer prayer, and wait now until you go there, say the Lord. He, and come tell me, see what the Lord says. They said, if we can only lay in his shadow, because the very God that was in Jesus Christ is in him, and we see the same thing doing. So they touched the border of Jesus' garment and laid in his shadow, and Jesus is in this man. If that shadow can reflect upon us, we will be healed. And the Bible said, every one of them was healed. No all night prayer meeting saying, Lord, if I go lay in the shadows of this apostle. No, they knew it. The light had struck them. Their hearts was full. Their faith was set loose. Amen. They believed it. They had seen it. Paul's hunkies the same way. Now I'm closing. Jesus never cried when they brought the maniac boy to him that had epilepsy falling into the fire. He never said, Father, I'm your son, and now you sent me here to do so and so and so. Can I heal this boy? He never said. He said, Come out of him, Satan. He spoke, and the boy was made well. When he met Legion with 2,000 devils in him, it wasn't Jesus crying, it was the devils crying. If you are going to cast us out, oh my, suffer us to go into that herd of swine. Jesus never said, Now, Father, am I able to do this? He said, Come out of him. And the devils took their flight. Sure, he knew that he was a Messiah at the grave of Lazarus. When he had been dead four days, they said, If you would have been here, Lord, he would not have died. He said, I am the resurrection and life. Amen. Not where, when, or how. He that believeth in me, though he but dead yet shall he live amen he knowed who he was he knowed what he was he knowed that he was emmanuel he knowed he was a resurrection he knowed he was life he knew that in him dwelt the fullness of the godhead bodily he seen them little people there and he had seen that what god had told him then to do and there he was he went down there he never said now wait I'll kneel down here. All of you kneel down and pray. He said, you believe that I'm able to do this. Amen. He asked for it. It wasn't him. It was them. Yea, Lord, I believe that you are the Son of God that was to come into the world. Oh, my. There. He is identified. Something has got to happen. Lazarus, come forth. He spoke and a dead man, come forth. Not can I, he just spoke. When the faith has met, the thing happened. He said, he speak, he spoke. And the blind saw, and the lame walked, and the deaf heard, and the, the devil screamed, and come out. The dead was raised up, everything. Why? He didn't come, pray through. He was anointed the Messiah. He was that Messiah. He knew he was. He knew his position. He knew what he was sent to do. He knew that the Father had identified him to be the Messiah to the believer. And when he met that believer with faith, he just spoke the word, Devil's Katadiasa, speak, don't cry, speak, amen. And he knew his God given rights, but we don't. He knew what he was. We don't. Moses had forgot. Samson understood. Others understood. Joshua understood. Moses forgot. God had to call his attention to it. He said, Why are you crying to me? I sent you to do the job. Speak and go to your objective. I told you you'd come to this mountain, take them children and lead them on. Just speak. I don't care what's in your way. Move it out of the way. I give you authority to do it. I spoke. You spoke to flies and fleas in, and creation and things like that. Now, what are you hollering to me about? Why are you coming to me hollering these things? Just speak and watch it move. That's all. Oh my. Oh, how I love it. Hear Jesus, everything that he said. He spoke the word and it was so God properly 
properly had vindicated him to be his son. He is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased hear him. Watch him I like this. How bravely, how majestically he stood before his critics. Amen. He said, destroy this temple and I'll pray the Father and see what he does about it. Destroy this temple and I'll raise it up again in three days. Not I hope to. I'm going to try to. I will do it. Why the scriptures said so. The same scripture that said he will raise up his body and give us the authority, the power. Amen. In my name, the shakas of devils, they will speak with new tongues. If they take up serpents or drink deadly things, it won't harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. Why cry unto me, speak and go forward, oh, bravely, I destroy this temple. I'll raise it up again, oh, and you remember now, we are closing. It was that same he. It was he that said in John 14, 12, the, he that believeth in me, the works that I do shall he do also. Is that right? It was he that said so. It was Jesus in Mark eleven twenty four that said, If you say to this mountain, not if you pray to this mountain, if you say to this mountain, be moved and don't doubt in your heart, you but believe that what you have said will come to pass, you can have what you have said now. You, if you say it just presumptuously, it won't happen. But if something in you that you are anointed for the job and will know that it's the will of God to do it and will say it is going to happen if ye it was he that people said if this if ye abide in me and my words abide in you ask what you will and it shall be done to you oh my oh my you see what I mean? Pardon this, but it's just coming up in me. I've got to say it. He said, it was he that said, that day up there inside of that woods, we have no game, and he created three squirrels standing there before us. What is it? Just speak in the word. See, they'll be there, and there, and there, and there they was. It was he that did that, Charlie Rodney. It was he down there in Kentucky, and Ellie Maggi, and the rest of you. It was he, that same God that was back there, and spoke to Moses. said, why don't you cry to me? Speak the word. It was he that brought them into existence. It was he. It's him. Oh, my. It was he that gave the vision about a year ago that said he we would go over there and these seven seals and how there would be a great thunder would stand started off and they would be in the shape of a pyramid and there there the look magazine the life magazine packed it hanging on the wall in there it was he that said that it was he that night when i was going down to down that road and seeing that big mamba snake about to get my brother and he said you've give, been given power to bind him or any of the rest of them it was he that said that to my little gray-headed wife sitting back there it was he that morning that woke me up there in the room and turned in the corner said don't fear to do anything or go anywhere or say anything for the never failing presence of Jesus Christ is with you wherever you go. It was he up yonder in Sabino Canyon about three months ago when I was praying, wondering what was going to happen. I was standing there and a sword dropped in my hand and said, this is the king's sword. It was he. It was he that said to me, as I was with Moses, so I'll send you. It was he that said to me, 30 years ago down on the river yonder as a little boy standing there as a little preacher on the river 30 years ago standing there by that light the same pillar of fire came down from the heaven and stood there and said as i sent john the baptist to forerun the first coming of christ your message shall forerun the second coming to all the world how could it be when my own pastor laughed 
and made fun of it but it happened just exactly that way it was he that said it yes sir oh how it was he that said in a prophecy to the vision it shall come to pass it was he that said if one among you prophesies or sees a vision and tells it and it comes to pass then remember it's not him it's me i am with him oh my what would i go on and say it's he it's he it's he he it's he that come down when i told them that the pillar of fire was down there on the river and they couldn't believe it it was he down there amongst when that baptist preacher before 30,000 people that night in the Sam Houston Colosseum, when that angel of the Lord had his picture taken, standing there, it was a he, the same message to the end forever, it was a he that foretold where are these things to be, it was he that said this, it was he that done these things, this, he's the same yesterday, today and forever, he's done everything just exactly like he said he will do it, amen. Why should I wait? God has vindicated the word. It's a truth. Let's journey. Let's walk. Let's go on the walk of the Lord. Laying aside all doubts, all sins, clean up the house, scrub it up. As Junior Jackson's vision said, there wasn't nothing left but lumps. His dream or his dream. If he's sitting here, nothing left but lumps and they had gold bands around them in the dream that he had given me the other night. Oh my brother Collings, don't worry about that fish. It was white. You just didn't know how to handle it. Lay aside everything else contrary to it. Remember, it is the truth regardless of how fanatically it seems and everything else sometimes move right on with it. It's the same Holy Spirit, the same God that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead, the same one that can speak things into existence, the same one that lived in the days of Moses, is the same one today. His call in this day is vindicated as it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. He's done. There is Sodom down there, there is Billy Graham, and our Roberts out there, and the church is moving on by the same signs that he promised both places, and there they are. It's he that said it, O oh Lord, give me courage, is my prayer. Help me, O oh Lord. I have to quit here. It's getting late. Why cry to me? Why are you crying to me when I've proved to be with you? Haven't I, haven't I healed your sick? He'd say, haven't I told you the things that happened just exactly? Your pastor can't do that to me. He can't. He's a man. It's me, Lord. That he would say, ah the one that did this i'm the one that tells him these things to say it's not him it's my voice i'm the one that he raises up your dead when they drop down i'm the one that heals the sick i'm the one that foretells these things i'm the one that does the saving i'm the one that gives the promise god give me courage to take that sword of the word that he put in my hand about 33 years ago and hold it and march forward to the third pool is my prayer. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, the hour is growing late, but the word is getting precious as we see it, Lord. Time after time, never failing presence of Christ always meets with us. How I thank you for your goodness, how you have spared us and been and blessed us. How we thank you for it. As I hold these handkerchiefs in my hand, Lord, it's people that has faith, that believes this. May every devil, every sickness depart from them, people. And I charge every spirit in here that's foul and not of God, every spirit of sickness, all diseases and afflictions. We are not laying in the shadow of man, which will be all right, but we are in the shadow of the gospel, vindicated gospel, as the great pillar of fire moves back and forth through this building the same one that god looked down through and the red sea gave up its course and israel passed through but now as he looks 
it's sprinkled with the blood of his own son with mercy and grace may we be obedient may we quit to de quit saying crying out may we realize that you have called us for this work and this is the hour i speak it in the name of jesus christ let every sickness depart from this place let every man and woman that calls on the name of jesus christ consecrate their life anew today i consecrate mine lord upon the altar of prayer i lay myself down and shame my own self and turn my heads towards the ground from where you took me lord i'm ashamed of my very weakness and my unbelief forget it lord give me courage give us all courage i feel like moses we are all on our road out we don't want to leave one we want to take everyone lord there you are, I claim them for you. Bless these people today, Lord. Grant it and bless me with them, Father. And thy name shall be praised. Thy glory shall be thine. Give us this eternal faith, Lord, as I consecrate ourselves to thee now. Me over this Bible and over this stand, I give you my life, Lord. I'm depending on every promise that you give. I know they will be confirmed. I know they are truth. Give me courage to speak these words. Give me courage, Lord. Direct me in what i shall do and say i give myself to you with this church along with it lord in the name of jesus christ amen my faith looks up to thee thou lamp of calvary savior divine now hear me while i pray take all my sins away oh let me from this day be holy thine lord. now let us stand real quietly as we have it to thee thou lamb let us raise our hands to him now oh savior consecrate yourself to god now now hear me while i pray take all my doubts away oh let me from this day be holy thine now together with the hands up commission repeats this prayer after my Branham, lord jesus i consecrate myself to thee a life of service more purely more faith i cry that i may be more acceptable servant in my coming life and I have been in the life that's past. Forgive my unbelief and restore to us the faith that was once delivered to the saints. I give myself to thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Now as we bow our heads, while life's dark maze I tread and grief around me spread be thou my guide be darkness turn to day wash all my fears away no let me ever stray from thee aside as we bow our heads now you feel like that the morning message has done you good give you courage if you would just raise your hands to god say thank god i thank you i got my hands both my hands up because i just feel that it's uh, so helped me it gives me courage some things i said i didn't think i was going to say it but it's already said i was a rebuke to me i found myself not in the way that I thought I did, but I found myself guilty of crying out all the time instead of speaking. God help me from this hour on that I'll be a more consecrated servant. Not only me, I pray for, I pray for you also, that together as a body of Christ, called out from the world, making ready for the promised land, that God will give me courage to speak the way, make the way clear that you won't miss a trail. I'll tell you, by the grace of God, I'll follow the bloody footprints of him who went on before us and is consecrated to cross our bear until death shall set me free and then go home a crown to where there's a crown for me.
we give this to thee, Father, our consecration. In the name of Jesus Christ, thy son, amen. Our brother begins to speak with tongues, blank spot on the tip. We thank the Lord for this. Walk a consecrated life. Give yourself over to sweetness, humility. Walk in the spirit. Walk, talk, dress. Act like Christians, humble, sweet, and sweet. Don't let this fail now. The voice of God speaks through the word speaks through gifts as one gift comes another one expresses it another gift comes and express the same thing see that's sure right with the word and right with the hour god i god is with us how we thank him for it now if our with your heads bowed if our sister would give us a cordon Take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. When temptations round you gather, just breathe that holy name in prayer. Just do that. Speak the word. Let his name, let sing now as we've been dismissed. Take the name of Jesus with you oh, as a shield from and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Oh, take it everywhere you go. Oh, precious name. Oh. Let's, now let's shake one another's hands and say, I'll pray for you, brother, and you pray for me, heaven. Precious name, precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy, oh heaven. Now with our heads bowed, let's sing this next verse. Take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. When temptations round you gather, breathe that holy name in prayer. Precious name, oh how sweet, oh how sweet. Precious name, precious name, oh how sweet, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. Precious name, oh how sweet. Hope of earth and joy of heaven. With our heads bowed now and our hearts with it, with the realization that Jesus said, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come up in the judgment but has passed from death unto life, knowing that we, by the grace of God, possess that within our bosom with a consecration to him this morning that our lives shall change from this day on that will be more positive in our thinking. We will try to live in such sweetness and humility that believing that what we ask God, God will give it to each other and we will not speak evil against each other or no man we shall pray for our enemies and love them do good to them that do but to us god is a judge of who is right and wrong with the on the basis of this and our heads bowed i'm going to ask our good friend brother Lee Vero, if he'll dismiss us the audience in order of prayer brother Vero.